and a matchup with Connecticut, the overall number one seed in their home whites, and we are underway from Bankers Life Fieldhouse. It's a lineup that features three first-team All-Americans, and here's one of them, Morgan Tuck, stepping outside the arc and misses on the first shot attempt of the night. Well, Oregon opens man-to-man. -man. It is their primary defense. They might sprinkle in some zone, perhaps triangle in two, but we expect a lot of man can they guard all five spots because that's what will be required of them back. Weisner off the mark, rebounded by Stewart. The average height for the starters. Oregon actually brings some good size, and UConn still able to score down low. Great. You mentioned the similarities between Oregon State under Scott Ruick, and they are the number one field goal percentage defensive team in the country. They will get after you. Nice drive by Samuelson against pressure. Baseline drive. The kick out. Sidney Weiss, no good. Hamlin tried to corral the loose ball, and a couple of Huskies getting in each other's way in the turnover back to OSU. Huskies coming in at 36-0 on this season. The remarkable thing about this group of seniors, they have played almost another entire season just in the NCAA tournament. This is the 23rd game without a loss for those three seniors as they get the turnover. Jefferson able to get it back. Tuck stepping outside, we see Ruth Hamlin staying down low in the paint. And the three ball is there for Kia Nurse. Well, the expectation, obviously, is when you've got three of the best players as you see your parents react. Nurse and Samuelson will get a lot of shots, right? Because if you're Oregon State, you're going to try to take away the three best players, Stewart, Tuck, and Jefferson. And that's an early foul on Stewart trying to check Hamlin one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, they uh, don't foul very much. And uh, first on Stewie, let's go to the offensive end the other side. Well, you get Samuelson, who luckily gets a bounce. The, the tip by the defender gives her a live dribble, and she takes great advantage of it. And listen, this is going to happen. UConn moves the ball incredibly well. It's a long closeout. Nurse gets an easy look. And Ruth Hamblin, the 6'6 senior from British Columbia, the Canadian Hammer. Draws the early foul on Stewart. These, by the way, are the two top active shot blockers in the country going head-to-head. -head. Now, let's remember, this is not a particularly deep Connecticut team, particularly in the post. They do have Collier and Williams, but you do not want to see any of your stars in trouble for Connecticut because absorbing that would be a major challenge. Tech gets a look and knocks that one down for two, and again... Hamlin inviting her to take that shot. What's going to happen with Ruth Hamlin at six foot six? She's going to be forced to move around the floor. Connecticut will lift her away from the rim, force her into constant movement, and that will be a challenge. Oh, and that's the two. second foul called on the hedge on Brianna Stewart, the three-time most outstanding player at the Final Four in trouble early. Uh, she jumps out to try to hedge, but it, it's a silly mistake. She is heading away from the basket. She is so far from the rim, not making a play. Can't hurt you there. Why Stewie would make that kind of play, I don't know. Gina Ariana Doris is going to keep her in the game. And of note, not a single player has fouled out this year for Connecticut. But Stewart does switch off of Hamlin. And, and you know, you heard Kara say this. If you're Oregon State, you hope that you make some shots early because everybody can take a collective sigh of relief if that happens. All right, so now how does Scott Ruet counter? Because Tuck has knocked down a couple outside. Well, she has. A couple things of note here. Obviously, they switched Stewart off Hamlin. We've seen Morgan Tuck deal with the likes of Elena Coach, similarly sized and framed to Ruth Hamlin. But that will be a challenge, and now you've got Stewie checking Hunter. Hanson will back it out. Defended by Samuelson, who's got the size advantage on the perimeter. And to your point, Beth, on the defensive end for Oregon State, do they switch out somebody else on top? Runner is good, Gabriella Hansen. And one of the things Scott Ruick talked to us about is, listen, they are very aware that Hansen is going to have a lot of shot opportunities. And how about the smarts right there of Tuck? This time Hamlin comes out and the blowbot. What did I say about having a quality four man who makes so much of what they do on both ends work? So she lifts Ruth Hamlin. Hamlin's got to close because of the two made threes and she puts it right on the deck. Beautifully done. Interesting to revisit now the, the Stewart fouls. When Gino Oriana talked to us this morning, he said, as a coaching staff, we have never felt this kind of pressure before coming to the Final Four 
having to win it for the seniors. Perhaps the players and Stewart feeling a little bit of that as well. Yeah, and now Connecticut's going to make a switch here defensively, go into his own, perhaps provide a little protection for Stewart. Wisner, the Pac-12 Player of the Year and the most outstanding player at the regional. After dropping 38 points on DePaul, the shot clock is winding down. They've got to rush one. Stewart is fouled, and that may be number two on Gabriella Hansen. We've talked about the depth or lack thereof for UConn. Similar story for OSU. Exactly right, Beth. And Hansen will depart, replaced by one of their other seniors, Samantha Signer, 6'3", so they'll get a little bit bigger. But they'll lose some quickness. Stewart picks it back out. Tuck around and out. Rebounded by Sydney Reese, the six foot junior from Phoenix. She's their top three point shooter in school history, but uh, it's been a, a cold hand thus far in the tournament. They're going to need her to heat up here tonight. Uh, just a tremendous battle on the post right now with Tuck. And this time the foul will be on Jamie Wisner. Terrific denial there by Kia Nurse. Well, Nurse is just such a hard-playing, terrific athlete. She gets her hand in the passing lane, forces the tip, and then in the loose ball action, Weisner commits the foul. And Jefferson will try it across. Jefferson, by the way, coming into this game, just a couple of assists shy of passing Diana Taurasi for the career lead at Connecticut. Samuelson bothered on the shot by Hamblin. She touched it last out of bounds. No, uh, now they will reset it. 30 on the shot clock. Oh, I guess they're going to say it hit underneath the backboard, so it's out of bounds off of Connecticut. And Connecticut extends their pressure just a bit, a little 1 2 2, and then they'll fall back, I expect, into that zone. And again, just trying to protect a little bit. Stewie, you have to be careful. As terrific a shot blocker as she is now, what does she do when a shot opportunity is close to the rim? There's one right there. Is able to snare the rebound off the miss. And now Stewart across midcourt. Jefferson, the drive, the dish. Tuck. That's just, she's eating them up, folks. And, and Gina Oriama likes to say that Morgan Tuck is our Draymond Green. What does he mean by that? Well, she's smart. She's multi-skilled, and now Scott's got to use a timeout. And this is a smart timeout because Morgan Tuck is doing work. This is the voice, the leader, the steadying. And then LeBron James is on deck, the next NBA player to come to town. Mariah Jefferson, congratulations with that last dish, passing Diana Taurasi. She is now number one all time in career assists at Connecticut. Holly Rowe reached out to Diana Taurasi, who had something interesting to say about moving into second place. We'll hear from her shortly, I'm sure. <laughs> She always has intriguing things to say. That's the third turnover for the Beavers. Nurse off the bounce. Samuelson wide open for three. That's the one you definitely can't leave alone. All right, this is the challenge guarding Connecticut because there are five players on the floor at any given moment who can score. And it's a team that specializes in sharing the basketball and finding the open spot. Beth, they are seven for ten shooting the ball against the number one field goal percentage defense team in the country. That's like the Villanova men last night in their national semifinal over 70%. Reisner trying to get by Stewart, who was playing with two fouls. She picked them up almost right away once this semifinal got underway. And a shot clock violation now for Connecticut on the defensive side. Let's check in with Holly Rowe. Well, Diana Durazzi had this to say about Mariah Jefferson passing her today with assists. She said, playing point guard at UConn, you have to be the most selfless person ever. And Mariah has done it better than anyone. High praise from one of the best to ever don a UConn jersey. Well, I love Mariah Jefferson. And she is the all-time leader in assists. But I would disagree and say that Diana was the best <laughs> one and two combination in UConn history. I remember when she was uh, in full bloom at Connecticut, there was always a debate. Was she a true point? Or was she a right. shooter? She, she was good enough to play both. She was the competitor who did whatever was required to win three straight championships. And the foul was charged to Sydney Reese, and there's Mariah Jefferson knocking it down. It's a 10 0 run for UConn. This is what you have to absorb and respond to. And this is a Connecticut team that prides itself and, in fact, has won 10 championships, Beth, on the strength of incredibly tough defense. 
Every opponent, Doris, knows they're going to take a shot from Connecticut. And how do you respond and how quickly do you get back within reaching distance? That's a really nice move in the scoop at the rim. So that's just a terrific job by Signer because you understand Stewie's got two fouls. She can't guard you that closely and commit the third. There's the drive, the kick out. Chuck looking for another three. That's her third of the first quarter. She just keeps spacing to the top of the key. They are not responding and closing. It's always a game of pick your poison and try and play the percentages. Stewart with the closeout, and then Wisner on the rebound stepped out of bounds. Well, again, we talked about the challenges Oregon State would face, and if you are not going to close on Ruth, you should see Ruth comes out a little bit too slowly. You do not close on Tuck, and I know that her percentage this year, Tuck, has not been as dynamic as it has been in the past, but this is a terrific shooter. She's fearless, Beth. These moments don't phase her, and if you don't start to respond to her, she's just going to keep burying you. Averaging 19.7 rebounds per game in this NCAA tournament. A couple days ago, named to the All-America team, and she is feeling it right now. A heat check there won't go. And the shooters get on track here with Reese and Wisner. They have been so dynamic in the backcourt, getting the Beavers to their first Pac-12 tournament title that went along with their regular season co-championship this year with Arizona State. That's another turnover six now in the quarter and nurse trying to go the distance draws the foul that is number two now on sydney weiss well thursday at five eastern the frozen four will be getting underway in tampa it's boston college and quinnipiac facing off in the national semifinals on espn2 visit ncaa.com it's the home for all 90 ncaa championships could not be more impressed with the effort Morgan Tuck is giving, and I know everybody's thinking I'm talking points. She's now been required to absorb the Ruth Hamlin matchup. On that last possession, she hedges out, gives Mariah Jefferson all the help she needs, gets back to cover Ruth, and what she is doing on both ends makes what Connecticut does work. You know, Emma was uh, teasing Brianna Stewart the other day in practice saying how, how is it that Tuck does all the work and you get to take home all the trophies for yeah. <laughs> most outstanding player honors Well, Morgan trying to work on a trophy of her own here Gabby Williams will now spell Brianna Stewart with the final 126 in the period so you take away the risk of the third at least here in this period that was the first foul on Mariah Jefferson Four to eight for the overall top seed against the two seed OSU. Weiss, the lefty three is good from the corner. Well, you saw that Mariah gambled on the steal, and that left her teammate to step in, which left the corner perimeter jump shot wide open. She talked about the poise that they played with, and a sense of peace, she called it, against Baylor. They're going to have to call on that again against a Connecticut team that just is not missing here in the first quarter. And who delivered the pass? Connecticut's version of Draymond Green, the smarts, the toughness, the playmaking ability of Morgan Tuck gives Gabby Williams a good look at the rim. And how about the development of Williams? How confidently she's now carrying herself. That is now 71% shooting against the best field goal percentage D in the country. And the counter three from Oregon State and Katie McWilliams, the freshman off the bench from Salem, Oregon. They're, they're attached, Beth. That's the important thing. Twelve is not an undo a doable deficit. So you just got to, you know, the way Scott Ruick described it, keep chipping away, right? In the pregame interview with Holly Rowe, keep chipping. We can hold it for one here to end the quarter. Jefferson. What, what travel? Did she travel? Called for the walk. Was there a foot drag? Mo says no. That's the first turnover for UConn. Well, that's a jump stop. And she had to, I guess she dragged the pivot because the official had a good look at it. Final seconds of the quarter. The double team here on Weiss. She'll get the shot up and draws a foul before the buzzer went off. They will go to make sure and review it. Wow, that's, that's consecutive calls by the same official. Joe Vasily, Felicia Grunner, and Brenda Pantoya, the officials 
Here for our first semi. Well, we get a look at it. Katie Lou Samuelson. Well, I don't see it out there. No. And I'd like to see the other end because to me, those are two big calls, right? UConn's in the paint. Well, they do it here. Maybe a couple of free throws. It would be Sidney Weiss to the line, a 77% free throw shooter. The Connecticut Huskies are up 12, Beth. They've absorbed the two fouls from Brianna Stewart and no points from Brianna Stewart. Yep. All because of the play of Morgan Tuck, or in large measure because of the play of Morgan Tuck on both ends. And obviously, you've got the best point guard in the country, Jefferson. And they're also going to look to see if it's a two or a three, and they are signaling over to us. It is three free throws coming here for Sidney Weiss. That was the first foul on Samuelson. They will also put four tenths of a second back up on the game clock. Reese will knock down the first. Uh, the daughter of a coach, a gym rat, along with her brother. The dad instilled in her work ethic fundamentals. And of course, as brothers often do, he provides the toughness. Big swing there for the Beavers to close out the quarter. Despite some stretch, very rarely do you see this call because her foot stays in contact with the ground. So you're right, it could be a pitch out to three. I thought the, the foul call on Weiss was also tough death. And so you're right, a six-point swing had UConn made a three. Let's see if Oregon State uh, can take advantage as we get underway here in the second quarter of our first national semifinal and an offensive foul will be called on Jamie Wisner so now Wisner and Weiss each with two fouls apiece Brianna Stewart with two fouls very early in the ball game for Connecticut she's on the court still and obviously so much of what Oregon State does is driven through those two guards so the complexion of the game entirely different if one of those has to check out do it without a point, but his uh, highly referenced Tuck is off to a good start, and so is Gabby Williams. So the Gabby Williams' maturity and growth over the course of her two seasons at UConn, the best athlete on the team, is starting to become a factor on the offensive end. Two shots, two makes. It's a UConn team uh, trying to run the table again. They're at their ninth consecutive Final Four, and there's Williams jumping right in front. Well, what flexibility she gives them on the defensive end. She starts checking the point guard and then goes in and guards 6'6". Six, six. Jefferson shot won't go. Nurse tried the stick back. Well, let's see now. If, if you're all against State, play to the matchup. Get the ball to the player Brianna Stewart is guarding, or at least put her in pick and roll action. Why wouldn't you attack her back? Weiss will attack the rim, driving down the right side for two. Yeah, it looks like uh, on that last possession, she was checking Devin Hunter. Let's see if they go to her next trip. Weiss is so good, though, Beth, with either hand as a finisher. She's got eight points and has been their spark early on. Weisner and Hamlin have been held in check, and there's Ruth making her mark on the defensive end, the Pac-12's career leader in block shots. <laughs> I'm sure what Katie Lou Samuelson was thinking, driving into size. <laughs> Rookie mistake for Samuelson in her first appearance at the Final Four. Weisner denied. Has a foot in that lane. Has to be careful of a three-second violation. Off the ball fake. The kick out. Shot clock is winding down. Denied again by Williams. Her second steal. And now Stewart looking for some help. Williams again denied by Hamlin. So she's usually athletic enough to get around or over the defensive player inside, but not the hammer. Look how calm the parents <laughs> of the hammer are. She's coming in averaging a double-double in the NCAA tournament. 11 points, 14 rebounds. She's already added a couple more blocks here tonight. And you get Stewie out again. You, or no, excuse me, you bring Collier in. So both their interior young players are on the floor in a critical moment for UConn. The delivery inside to Stewart, and she's fouled by Samantha Signer. That is her first. That is the second team foul of the quarter. Remember, new this year in the women's game, 
You get to five team fouls in a quarter, you start immediately shooting two free throws. These are two of the best teams in the country, though, at not putting their opponents yeah. on the free throw line. Tuck, England has to come out and at least contest. Tuck tried to drop it off for Stewart. The spacing wasn't right there for Connecticut. Do you know where I am on? Named the WBCA Coach of the Year, the AP Coach of the Year. Got sentimental and a little emotional. Tears welling up in his eyes. Receiving one of those honors yesterday. Weak side rebound, Hamlin, no. They'll have a third opportunity. He's had a lot to deal with this week off the court, and those constant questions, Doris, that pop up about whether their winning is good or not for the women's game. He had a great line today. He said, when did winning become a problem? I thought that was the whole point. It's, it's frankly something I don't understand, and, and, and I'm tired of defending, to be perfectly honest, Beth. And I feel like, whoa, Stewie, a chancy block. <laughs> With two fouls, she got a piece of the ball. The pull-up nurse off the window. Stewart up by the rim for the tip, no, and a third chance is good. Once or twice a game, Brianna Stewart's going to make a play that she's the only player in the country that could do it. If only she had finished that bucket. Her teammate cleans it up for her, though. Right on her in the turnover. Those are starting to mount up. It's already 10 now, Doris, in the first half. Tuck for three, looking for another short. And after dropping three early, she's missed her last two attempts out there. Weisman has not had a lot of room to maneuver. Hamlin, though, doing the job on the O boards. Yeah, you see, normally that'd be a, one of the shots that Stewie would go after, but because she's in foul trouble, I thought it was risky that the prior possession where she made the terrific block. That's one of the best rebounding teams in the country. Oregon State only out rebound three times all year. And the pull up from Mo Jefferson. How about uh, Stewart's ability to play? She, she had the first 2,000, the first 205, and here we are approaching five and a half minutes. Weisner gets the three ball. She's got five. She's averaging 20 per game in the tournament. Nurse drops that off for Nafisa Collier. But just to your point about Connecticut's winning, Beth, because I couldn't finish my thought, I don't know whether it's the remnants of a cultural bias, why, why we feel the need to take shots at women's sports. What Connecticut is achieving is incredibly difficult to do. I know they make it look easy. It isn't. Collier got the block, but then the ball came down to her while she was standing out of bounds. Well, and all Gino has to do is look across the way to Scott Ruick, who is trying to do things the exact way that Gino did for that state coached by a guy like Scott Ruick. They're not going to go away, Beth. Yeah. You know, this is a manageable deficit. They're tough, they're smart, they're well coached, and they won't stop playing hard. They have come a long way in a very short period of time. Shot clock is winding down. Wisner picks up the dribble way outside, has to launch one towards the rim, almost knocked it down. You've got so tough defensively. They can switch virtually every position. It doesn't matter if there's a mismatch. And this is what we've seen from them throughout the tournament. 11 points off of turnovers. That's just as good as a turnover right there. And it's Tuck's third triple. Yep, three for seven. And again, they will work until they find the open shot. And she has been open consistently at the top of the key. Junior out of Bolingbrook, Illinois. She was huge last year in the semis, remember, as well, against Maryland with 24 points. And a block shot by Collier. They are really making things difficult on Weisner. They missed the run out. Stewart able to keep it alive. And then Jefferson traveled with it. Yeah, that's a very good call. She was a little bit anxious, but let's just continue to watch Morgan Tuck work from three-point territory. The pick and roll on one side, the down screen from Stewart to Tuck frees up the wide open Morgan, and she delivers. 
a knee injury a couple of years ago. Uh, it's flared up again. Uh, missed a few games during the middle of the season with some knee soreness. Managing her time, biding her time to be here and be big in this moment. To be honest with you, from that point forward, she has been going to a chiropractor and is pain-free back. Yeah. And for the first time, has not had to sit out practices. For more, here's Holly. Well, she actually had a very unusual procedure called the Oats Procedure, the Osteochondral Transfer System, where they actually transfer cartilage from one part of her knee to another. She has taken almost two years to recover. Her athletic trainer, Rosemary's done a great job managing her time, but they say she is stronger than ever, finally playing without a brace this season. Jefferson around and down. Yeah, Holly, she tried the brace for a little while, didn't like it. And uh, she told us she's full goal right now for the final four. It's nice to have a couple of buddies, too, that you can rely on to make big plays. And now Weisner finding some space. Well, I thought that could have been an end one. That is a yeah. terrific job by Weisner. I thought she might have gotten hit on the hand and could have shot one. Senior out of Clarkston, Washington. She was the first big-time recruit to buy in to what Scott Ruek was selling in Corvallis. Stewart turns around and hits, and that is her first basket of the night. In foul trouble early, knocks down that shot. It's 41 to 26. Timeout. Or <laughs> guiding uh, guiding Villanova to the biggest semifinal win in tournament history last night. Well, my daughter is now a law student at Villanova, so you'd think I'd be rooting for yeah. the Cats because I know she is. <laughs> Shot clock, boy, they have been under duress of this an awful lot in this second quarter. Weiss, Tuck, able to track it down. Samuelson calling for it all the way down the floor, gets her feet set, misses on the three. A little surprise, Gina or Emma has Brianna Stewart in the game, right? You are in complete command of the game, you've got two minutes left. The equation changes in the second half if she's got a third here in the final couple minutes. Stewart, a collision in the lane, and this will be a foul on Ruth Hamblin. That will be her first. This is a possession, by the way, kept alive again by Gabby Williams, the sophomore from Sparks, Nevada, who's been making those little plays on both ends of the floor. She's been terrific, Beth. I just, it's amazing to watch how differently she carries herself. Gives him great versatility on the defensive end, an outstanding athlete, relentless defender. Switch that foul, by the way, to Marie Gulich. Stewart. Williams. Open J. And that's the one area when I was at uh, Connecticut early in October to watch them practice, he said, if I can get Gabby Williams making 12 to 15 foot shots, folks, look out. Because if she's scoring, I don't know how you beat them. Oregon State allows just 51 points per game this year, folks. UConn is already at 43, shooting better than 50%. And a turnover, and Jefferson turns on the Jets. And now Connecticut has its biggest lead of the night. minute of uh, the first half. Weisner's pass deflected again. It was Williams getting a fingertip on it. It will stay with the Beavers. Okay, since she can get down in the stance and guard your fastest player, she can get into the post and, and defend a bruiser with her athleticism. And there is the departure of Stewie to make sure she doesn't pick up that third. Stewie picked up those two fouls in the first two minutes and five seconds of the game. Last touch by Oregon State, a smile from Gino. He thought he had the call correct, but the striped shirts are the ones with the whistles. Under 10 again on the shot clock. Hamblin sets a big screen, and out of control on the drive was Weiss, and it's Collier stepping in. And Nafisa takes the charge, and that is the third personal foul on the star point guard for the Beavers. 
and Weiss will depart. This is just such a fundamentally sound defensive group. Player gets the corner turned, a shoulder by, and Collier recognizes Tuck in trouble and steps in beautifully. Wide open Williams around and out. Samuelson, offensive rebound, stick back. How about her growth? It's a time when she got to Connecticut. She was running around on the three-point line just humping shots. <laughs> there are other things you can do to help your team win. She's figured that out in a big way. We're going to extend some pressure here with the game clock winding down to close out the second quarter, and it's a steal for Collier, taken away by Weisner, missed the layup at the buzzer. Huskies close out the half on a fifth stop before the defense can collapse and take those charges on me. UConn has presented a challenge getting that ball inside to Ruth Hamlin and taking advantage of points in the paint. What can you do better there? Uh, I think we just got to elevate our passes a little bit. I know our passes have been a low trajectory, so we got to make sure that we lob it up. She's 6'6", so there's no reason not to get it up there for her. Can you guys come back? Yes, we can. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you, Holly. The big three for Oregon State with 19 points in that first half. Just 10, though, in the paint for the Beavers through the first 20 minutes. And Ruth Hamblin to Holly's point. And the question put to both Scott Ruick in the first quarter and Jim, uh, Sydney Weiss there. Ruth Hamlin, one for yeah. four, Beth. So and now, four shot opportunities for her. Sorry, Doris, but now more problems because Jamie Weisner has just picked up her third personal foul. So both starters out on the perimeter with three each. And Gabby Williams gets the start in the second half. Williams is out there replacing Katie Lou Samuelson, who was feeling under the weather the other day, actually did not practice yesterday. Yeah, and she doesn't start the period, and she's not on the bench that I could see as Stewie takes it right to the rim. Holly, I think, may have an update for us. Holly? Katie Lou Samuelson has taken to the back with a left ankle injury. I saw them take her to a room where they're doing x-ray and extra imaging. I overheard their athletic trainer, Rosemary Yagel, tell excuse me, Rachel tell uh, Gina Oriema that Katie Lou felt something pop in that ankle. Her return is doubtful. That is huge news for UConn. And Gabby Williams is going to get the foul call here. We think we have a look at where this happened. That was late in the second quarter Ooh. and on the spin right there. The 6'3 freshman from Huntington Beach, uh, two games already in the tournament with 20 points, stars. Yeah, and Gabby Williams, not quite the distant shooter, but what a job she did in that first half on the defensive end. Here she is checking Hanson. And that's going to be the third foul on Brianna Stewart. Two of the three were more than 15 feet away from the bucket. Gino Oriana talks all the time about he feels like players should get into foul trouble. It's an immaturity. She just bodies up, and on the dribble drive, Hunter gets tripped up. It is a rarity for Stewart not to play well in the biggest games on the biggest stage. And it's been a struggle with the fouls as Gabriella Hansen knocks down the three. It's back to a 20-point game. Hanson down on the deck to get the steal, and then Jefferson will tie her up. Possession arrow to the Beavers. So a couple things we're unaccustomed to seeing. The foul trouble from Stewart, obviously Rebecca touched on this. She's never fouled out of a game in her college career. And then when do you see Mariah Jefferson cross over the ball in a position where a defender can get a strip in the open floor? Very rare. Well, we've talked about how good statistically and uh, how good against everybody else in the country the Oregon State defense has been. And they have an impact here in the second half. Weisner probed the baseline. There's a touch inside, and Hamblin comes up short. Just so smart, Beth. And Jefferson with the turnover there off the tips of Nurse. Just put it too far in front of Nurse. So probably she didn't use a bounce pass there. And there is a boot already on the foot of Katie Lou Samuelson, who has obviously come back out and sitting on the bench, but apparently done for the day. Well, she's having an extended conversation with Rosemary. It looks like she's frustrated that yeah. she's in that boot. You wonder if she's fighting sort of being 
forced to sit out here. Hamblin. Surrounded by a couple of defenders uh, twice. Stewart does what she should do. Just use that incredible wingspan and make Ruth just shoot over the top. You can't commit the foul. You've got a long enough reach that it could still be hard for Ruth to score it over the top of you. She has over 400 blocks in her career, does Stewart. She also has over 400 assists. The only player in history with that kind of skill set. And Gabby Williams continues to have one of the best games of her career tonight. But just so confident. Relocation, finding the open areas, and shooting without hesitation. And that's only a product of the work she's put in. She's got eight points, but she's been doing the job on the defensive end as well. Sixth rebound now for Stewart. Bounce pass into Tuck, who opened up. Got down on the block, and the foul will be on Devin Hunter. The first on the senior from Kaiser, Oregon, who is making her 105th consecutive start tonight. Hamblin will check out. Gulich will come on. And look at Gino Oriema over there on the sideline, putting his arms on the shoulders of, of Samuelson. And she looks like she's uh, pretty emotional over there. And Tears over there on the bench now wearing the boot. Jefferson, another turnover. This is Weiss. Going to take it herself and one. I told you, they're not going to go away. And this is oftentimes what happens. UConn will get a lead and the other team will concede. Look at Weiss just draw the foul, force the official to make a call, seeking contact. That is beautifully done. You love the fire with which she plays. Well, Steve Nash fan and... Uh, he would have been proud of that move for Reese. You can tell she's a coach's kid, right? Yeah. And just solid fundamentally, really good decision maker. Handles it with both hands, can finish either hand. And a hunger born out of defeat. She told us she lost three straight state championships in high school. And that has steeled her in her college career. And they've got another turnover. And Stewart may have hurt her finger. Shaking it as she comes up the floor. The Washington Huskies entering the building. The seven seed getting set to take on the four seed Syracuse. Chantel also absorb all of the pressure that Quinton Hillsman and the Syracuse Orange will put on them. Multiple pressure packages. A high turnover margin team. It is the best in the country. And they will chuck a lot of threes. Just like that one for Brianna Stewart. She's now got seven. Three-time AP Player of the Year, the first in history, the first time it's been a unanimous vote. And she got another honor, and then there she is defensively forcing the walk. It's widely anticipated, Doris, that she will be the graduating collegian that will join the United States at the Olympics in Rio. You know, she's just such a difficult matchup. Six foot four. <laughs> she walks by Gino, gets a show. But her, her skill set will translate beautifully to the next level. She's so much more confident in her handle than when she first came in. Deadly from distance. So athletic around the rim. Tuck, another three. That's her fourth of the ball game. She's got 19. It's a machine. What'd she tell us yesterday? She was frustrated with her long-range shooting. And then a couple of weeks ago, she and Stewart got into the gym more time with a ball and a rim, and her numbers have gone up. They both, uh, Brianna Stewart and Morgan Tuck, paid the price academically over the summers in the first semester to try to lighten their load. They've got some time to get in the gym and get extra shots. Signer couldn't keep her feet. Well, the Connecticut Huskies in pursuit of history. Can they become the first team to win four straight national championships, being aided greatly by one of the anchors, one of the three best players in the country, Morgan Tuck, doing work from three-point territory. Huskies rolling. Necessary to make that catch back. 
career high four threes made already or career high in points is 26 she's she's a long way there already she could flirt with that uh, the junior from Bolingbrook, illinois but she is uh, came in with the other seniors and it's uh, expected that she will probably enter the WNBA draft after the year. I think she should. I mean, you're on the precipice, as Holly likes to say, of an unprecedented four. You only have a limited window, and I know her knee is 100% healthy, which will make WNBA teams very happy, uh, but you always are concerned about your window as a professional athlete. And as good as they have been offensively, defensively, they have held Ruth Hamblin, a one for six shooting. Wisner is just three for nine. And they have scored 21 points off of turnovers while holding Oregon State to just 11 baskets. And we've got 340 to go in the third. Stewart. Constant movement comes up short on the shot. And a smile over to her head coach. It's a rarity for Brianna. It's what the rest of us call one of those nights. We have them a little more often <laughs> than she has had over the course of her career. And, and we're seeing, too, the balance of why it's so difficult. You are hoping and praying as an opponent that you get them when somebody's having an off night and yet the others have picked up the load. Well, Tuck doesn't surprise me as Collier darn near gets another interception there. I think, for me, Gabby Williams, who in that first quarter and second quarter, I thought was terrific on both ends, made open shots, really competed on the defensive end, and just to watch this young girl grow up and change in terms of how she comports herself between the lines, it's been a real transformation. She came in as a great athlete and is starting to get more and more skilled. You better look out, folks. You know, we talk about the seniors, but she's back, Nurse is back, Collier is back, Samuelson returns next year. They've got the top-rated point guard coming in next year out of the high school ranks. And that's yeah. why it's her fourth. She was the foundation that got things going. Scott Ruek said when she arrived, she brought hope with her. And amazingly enough, four years later, the dream of getting to the Final Four, a reality, it's not been her night, but what a career it's been. Well, and, and how about Wisner and the willingness to, to be sold on hope and vision and work ethic and all the things requisite to build the program. Nicely done there by McWilliams. Freshman gets the triple. Oh, and Scott Ruan took over. That first season was nine wins as Stewart drills the three. So you're walking in to Jamie Wisner's house, Scott Ruick, and trying to sell the future because the present wasn't very good. And Wisner says, I want to be a part of what you're doing and what's going to be happening there in the next few years. You know what he sold around? And, and Wisner said this back. He said, she said, it wasn't about the wins and losses. It was about the people. He told me he was going to bring in the kind of people necessary to win as Stewart is going to pick up I believe her fourth they're looking, nope. they, it looks like they may have given it to Collier instead wow that certainly looked like <laughs> Stewart was there first uh, that's, that's a good call she was yeah. first yeah no question that's the second on Collier two shots for Sydney Weiss and now, and now, just to continue and finish that story, Weissner said, that was it. He pitched people to me, that he cared about me as a person as much as he did as a player. And I think to me, Beth, the, the best coaches in the country are those who, who take themselves and consider themselves teachers first and foremost. And that's what Scott does, and that's what Gino does. Now, I really like the future of his program. There is the past. And remember, Kevin was talking about this in the studio pregame. It was probably the least desirable coaching job in the Division I ranks in America when he took over. And here they are at the Final Four for the first time in school history and the champions of the Pac-12. And this is the problem. And in RTs, he talked about this. He said, they are the best, so you look to the best. The problem for teams that haven't faced UConn is you're not prepared for what's coming at you in terms of speed and diversity of scoring and the difficult nature and challenge it is to score against this Connecticut team. It always helps to get a game or two under their belt. That is, to me, 
how Notre Dame had that period of success yes. against UConn. Remember Skylar Diggins when she first arrived, uh, lost for a couple of years, and then the last two years, they took over the rivalry. It's a stretch in which they won yeah. seven of eight. Stewart has to pull up. Look at how long and how close to the rim she gets with that extension. Boy, we have that play in the first half where she darn near tipped it in, and her hands were above the rim, and the release point of that one was above the rim. Hamlin around and down. I'm trying to put a little pressure now on Mariah Jefferson. Mariah becoming the all-time assist leader at Connecticut, passing Diana Taurasi in the first half. Nurse muscled that one up and over Ruth. Been a bit of an up and down season for Nurse, but she said, I want to get back to what I was doing well, and that's driving the basketball. How about the ability with that frame to take that contact and still finish? Look like Uncle Donovan there, the football player. Yeah. Donovan McNabb with the body control with contact. Final seconds of this third quarter. Hamlin gets it to go to beat the buzzer. One quarter to go, 64. It's her makeup, she's just, just a solid human being and a solid kid who makes big plays because she never rattles. So, 10 more minutes. I think that's... All right, well, thank you very much, Holly. Well, we've talked about the lack of depth a little bit for this UConn team. They have never really had to go very deep or very many minutes off of that bench. That may be the case in the national championship if they advance here. Last seven games, she's been the 30, third leading scorer. She shot 50% from three. She gives him a long distance threat. Let's remember, this was the best high school player in the country. She's improved drastically over the course of this season on the defensive end of the floor. She gives you size. Now, you are going to go with Gabby Williams, who becomes a more versatile athletic defender than Samuelson, but not the range shooter. How about that move by Collier? Wow. Wraps it around underneath. She's got six. And a comfortable lead to start the fourth quarter for Connecticut as they try and advance to the national championship game for the 11th time. And what's also remarkable about that is if you don't get Gino in the semis, it's trouble in the finals. He's 10 and 0 in national championship games. As they continue their quest for an unprecedented fourth consecutive national championship. Remember the UCLA men back in the 60s and 70s? Freshmen were ineligible to play, so those guys only won three in a row. Connecticut trying for a fourth, and Morgan Tuck now with 21. Bringing it around the perimeter. McWilliams, she's been a bright spot from outside for them tonight. She sure has. Three for three from distance for her. Just playing off her teammates, staying spaced in that corner. First trip to the Final Four for the Beavs, and they have run into a buzzsaw here tonight on both ends. Jefferson with the pull-up. A smart decision, right? She's going to jump stop and get into that mid-range before she meets the size. Meisner and Hamlin both out of the game right now. It's been a struggle for those two. Weiss has been able to get some stuff done for them offensively, and now Jamie Weisner will check back into the lineup. She's got those four fouls. How about this move from the freshman Collier? This is why they are excited about her future. Another big-time athlete whose skill is going to get better and better under the staff's tutelage. Two times the Missouri Player of the Year, the freshman out of O'Fallon, Missouri. Moose off the hesitation and runs into the Canadian hammer. Boy, imagine the transformation for, for Ruth Hamlin. I mean, we've had people... Uh, associated with the program talk about how much of a project she was how hard she had to work to develop the skills she has that's her fifth block of the game there 
in her 132nd career game tonight. And another bucket off the bench. Natalie Butler, its biggest lead of the night here for UConn. Hunter off the flash, pass deflected, it goes right back to Devin. And Tuck snags the rebound, the long outlet to Jefferson. And now Mariah wants it back. Ten points, five assists, three rebounds for her tonight. She's hit five of her six shots. Stewart curling off the screen in and out. in the trail position. Gino looking for the right matchup here. So you've got Wisner on Stewie. Stewart gets into the lane, a little two-man game. You just keep working until you get the switch you want, the matchup you want. Very hard to contest her shot, Beth, at the point of elevation. She's so much beyond anybody's reach. Much better in the second half for Brianna Stewart with a dozen points. Had to let Hamlin go on that one. Playing with four fouls. Ruth now with ten. The career leader in rebounds, the career leader in blocked shots at Oregon. She was the Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Year. Oh, by the way, she's also a mechanical engineer and a rocket scientist. Is Stewart apparently unimpressed with my academic discussion? Says, let's get back to some hoops. I'm impressed by the academic discussion and the diverse interest of one Ruth Hamlin. How about that? Six foot six. We have a picture of her riding a horse. Yes. In a prom dress. A jack of all trades. But we're able to box her out right there. Scott Ruick calls them high character kids. And part of the recruiting process involves a sense of maturity. Yeah. And asking the players when a recruit comes on a visit, would they make a good teammate? And if the answer is no, you're not coming. Well, and that to me is the similarity in what Scott Ruick is trying to establish. He's, he's, he's recruiting high character people first. And that to me is the way you want to build your program. You, know, you ask your kids, is this somebody you can work with for four years back? He's going to lose this terrific senior class of Wisner, Hunter, and Hamlin, but some pieces are coming back. Right now, it's been a struggle against Connecticut. Now, in the first half, it was Morgan Tuck, Brianna Stewart, the first three-time AP first-team All-American has done some work. Pick and roll, two-man game, get the switch. She rises, she fires with that wingspan and that skill set. It is pretty to watch. Cashback every purchase every day. Back here to the national semifinals, 79-46, Connecticut in control with 424 to go. A lot of the former Huskies are in the house, including Stephanie Dolson checking out the action. Well, she went quick to that dyed hair when she stepped in, <laughs> graduated from Connecticut, because that would never be allowed under Chris Daly. She won a couple of those 10 national championships. Of course, the three-time winners is this group of seniors, Diana Tarasi's class with Maria Conlon. Kalina Mosqueda-Lewis last year departed with three titles. But I think the consensus is, and you're on board with the, with the Bird, Jones, Williams, and Cash group as probably being the best ever. Oh, 2002 to me yeah. was the best team in their history. I don't think there's any question. It would have been nice to see 2001 be able to complete the season healthy. Of course, 
you had Shea Ralph and Svetlana Obrusimova yeah. both go down. That could have, to me, challenged 2002. Yeah, a lot of people forget they had some injury issues back in those early days after the first national championship. They've got another one now with the broken foot of Katie Lou Samuelson, who will be out for the final. And you heard Gino Oriama say that this is part of the game of basketball. You do lose players that can have an impact on title chases. You know, Gabby Williams, I would anticipate, would get the start. And I thought on the defensive end and offensive end, she was terrific. They would be facing either a four-seed Syracuse or a seven-seed Washington and would go into that championship as heavy favorites, no doubt. I'm looking forward to that Syracuse-Washington game. You've got two dynamic point guards, both of whom have been dynamic scorers. Alexis Peterson for Syracuse, Kelsey Plum for Washington. Folks, these are two players you want to tune in and watch. And two teams that averaged 85 points in their regional wins, including some upsets. Over South Carolina for Syracuse. They knocked off Tennessee as well. And for Washington, they had to win on two higher seeds home floors, winning at Maryland and at Kentucky. I thought they were as impressive as any team in the tournament. How about the Pac-12 all season? Yeah, let's as you see Mike Tarico in the house. <laughs> his daughter Cammy sitting next to him. Of course, his wife Debbie played at Syracuse. That's her jersey. She's wearing the number 10 of Debbie. Mike Tirico on hand for the men's national semifinal last night. Comes here tonight. Stewart checks out. Stewart, the Syracuse native. Cicero North Syracuse High School will depart. Boy, wouldn't that be a, an intriguing subplot if she's got to go through her hometown team to make that historic fourth national championship run. Or Collier, Butler, had to fade away. Hamlin bothered that one, and the foul will be called on Gabby Williams. <laughs> 2 18 to go, and now Jefferson will join Stewart and Tuck on the sideline, and she will also take with her the career assist lead. In Connecticut history, better than Tarasi, better than Bird, better than Rosati or Montgomery. And with her running a tight ship today, Doris, they are shooting 59% as a team. Back to back award winner as the best point guard in the country, right there. And according to our Carol Lawson on the pregame show, said the second best player in the country, and I would concur. And I do think that there are times where, where Morgan Tuck is a little bit overshadowed in her contributions. You think they will be the top three? We talked about the 0-2 class that had, what, four of the top five draft picks. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I was listening to Sue Bird on the, on the terrific podcast of LaChina Robinson and Chinea Gulmake, which is on ESPN.com. Uh, it's a must-listen if you are... A women's basketball fan, they do a terrific job. Sue Bird was saying she absolutely thinks they should go one, two, three, and that's a player with over a decade in the league. And uh, more than a couple Olympic gold medals as well. Of course, Gino, after the season, will uh, get to work with the national team and get ready for Rio. Well, today at 7.30 Eastern on ESPN, join us for the NCAA Women's Championship Special Pre-Game Show presented by Capital One, followed by the National Championship Game at 8.30. Visit NCAA.com, a home for all 90 NCAA championships. For more information, the UConn Huskies appear to be headed to the championship game once again on Tuesday night. Who's going to join them? Syracuse and Washington are coming up next on ESPN2. Hunter and one. Thirty-two and four on the season. The Pac-12 double, regular season champs, tournament champs. They've talking about building towards something special. Scott Ruick said they arrived actually a little earlier than planned. That yeah. could be a problem for the rest of the Pac-12. And listen, this moment, a nice moment. Oops. 
Scott and Ruth, the growth for both of them. And I, this is not the last time you will hear from this yeah. program, but they are building it the right way. Went 27 and 5 a season ago as Ruth checks out 10, 11, and 6. May not be the last time you hear from Hamlin and Weiser either. They could be playing against the United States for Team Canada in Rio this summer. Amazing what they have accomplished and to get here with the Beavs. We will take the time out with 118 to go and UConn in front. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware. 25 a game for the Orange. Kelsey Plum lives at the free throw line. 293 attempts. A master of the ball in their hands as Weisner gets the pick here. That's coming up shortly after our game over on ESPN2. Jamie Weisner gets the land in her final minute in an Oregon State uniform. That group will be long remembered as long as Scott Ruick is there as the ones that put Oregon State back on the map and taking them to heights they had never achieved before. And how important it is, Doris, for these first-timers. Now recruits know who you are when you walk in the gym to watch them. A great point, but you've got to take this and use it in recruiting to have a quick impact. You signed Wisner. That was a seminal moment. This has to be a seminal moment in your program. Same goes for Syracuse and Washington coming up next. One Pac-12 team will be out. Another one still remains, and it will be up to Washington to try and end the West Coast drought. It's been since 1992 that the West Coast last won a national championship. And Wisner and Signer, a couple more seniors, will depart. Well, they, they can take great pride, Beth, in, in the amount of rapid progression that Oregon State program has made. You're right. The long view of history will look kindly on that senior class. History already smiling upon the Yukon Huskies with 10 national championships and an opportunity on Tuesday night to try for an 11th that would push Gino past John Wooden and would get the seniors that historic fourth championship in a row. The Huskies are on to the final. 80 to